It's been a terrible week here in America. Nothing but disaster is all over the news. And one of the biggest problems in America is that the laws change depending on who you are. The rules are not the same for everybody and they should be. How can you have rules? How can you have laws if they don't apply to everybody? And the perfect example of this fact is to look at Hillary Clinton. This week, the FBI concluded their investigation into Hillary Clinton's email scandal. And the FBI basically said that she broke the law. But then in the same sentence, they say they're not going to recommend an indictment. Hillary Clinton got a pass. First, she said that the State Department allowed her to have this special server. The FBI said no, this was an unauthorized server. Then Hillary Clinton said that she never received or sent any information that was marked classified. The FBI said, yes, she did. At the time that she sent and received, we have dozens of emails here that are all marked classified. Then Hillary said she only used one device for her emails. The FBI says, no, she used multiple devices, iPads, iPhones, more than one device. The list just goes on and on. Then her husband and former president meets with the attorney general. You're not supposed to do that because she's overlooking the case and your wife is under investigation. It's just a disaster. The whole thing is an embarrassment and she gets a pass. If I did that or if you did that, let's say you work for a company and that company has access to customers information. You have access to social security numbers, credit card numbers, very sensitive data. If you do what Hillary Clinton did, you would be fired on the spot. It doesn't matter if you intended to do it. If you put that information at risk, this very sensitive information that could be used for identity theft and all kinds of things. If you put this sensitive information at risk, you would be fired. But here's Hillary Clinton. Not only did she not get fired, nothing bad happened to her. And she's effectively looking for a promotion. She's running to be the president of the United States and she probably will be and nobody cares. So how can you expect to have justice at the local level, at the civilian level, if you can't even have justice at the highest level in the government? And there's even been polls. People were polling before this indictment, before the FBI even made their decision. And most Americans said that even if she got indicted, they still want her to run for the presidency and they're still gonna vote for her. This is honestly a non-issue. Her entire career, she's been telling all kinds of lies from lying to landing under sniper fire. She just, she tells all these lies right to our face and it doesn't even matter. It can't be used against her. But if you were to go on social media and snitch on yourself, they're gonna use that against you. Just look at all the rappers. You ever seen a rapper where something they said in their lyrics will get used against them in court, against them in a case as evidence to say, hey, look, he's snitching on himself. Just caught a body about a week ago. That's the Bobby Shmurda effect. But yet for Hillary, it does nothing. Now, before I get into these shootings, I'm going to tell a story and experience I had with a police officer just for some perspective. I got pulled over about a year and a half ago. And when I got pulled over, I was actually really calm. I was in a good mood. I wasn't scared. I was feeling smooth because I'm like, I didn't even do anything. What you know, what, what's going to happen here? So I'm real calm. I roll down the window. The cop says, can I see your license and registration? I say, sure. And my registration is in the glove compartment. So as I'm reaching over to the glove compartment, I notice that my hands are shaking. I'm looking at my hands and I'm like, why are my hands shaking? Because in my mind, I'm not scared. I'm calm. I'm cool, collected. It's broad daylight. I'm in a good mood. I know I didn't do anything. I'm not armed, but yet my hands are shaking. They're trembling. So I open up the glove compartment. I reach for the registration. I drop the registration. My hands are shaking like crazy. I pick it up off the ground in the car under the glove compartment. I'm bringing it over to him. My hands are still shaking. I'm trying to tell myself, stop shaking hands. I hand it to him. He checks my information. I'm all good. Then he tells me that I was pulled over because 
I didn't renew my registration. I was about a month late. You know that sticker you get to put on your license plate that says the month and the year that you expire? So the last time I did that, it was two years ago, and I just, I literally forgot. An honest mistake. That's the kind of thing where you don't get a notification. You don't get anything in the mail. It's not like car insurance where they email you, they send you something in the mail physically saying, hey, you gotta pay this by the due date, you gotta renew. Honest mistake. So this copy lets me go, no issue, no warning, no ticket or anything, he lets me go. Now the significance of this story is that I thought that I was not scared. I thought that I was cool collected, but yet I was absolutely terrified because my hands were shaking. So consciously, I wasn't scared, but subconsciously, I was scared. And I know that I'm not the only black person that when they've been pulled over, they're doing the same thing. Your hands might be trembling. You might be fearing for your life in this situation, even if you haven't done anything. And then imagine how scared you're going to be if maybe you did do something. And then you have to remember that all of us are a little bit different. So... Even though on the outside, I appear to not be scared with my facial reactions and even my mind, but then I really was. Maybe other people, they can't appear that way. Maybe they just, in a situation like this, they're so tense and they're just freaking out. Who knows? We're all different. We all react differently. And black people, honestly, we never want to be in a situation where we have to interact with a police officer. And every time an event like this happens, it's just another thing that goes in the back of our mind that makes us scared of police officers. And it doesn't even matter what the situation is, because at first, when these incidents would happen, we would have to rely on witnesses, black people that are witnesses saying what the police are doing. No video evidence. Nobody would believe what the police are doing. But then even when we have video evidence, there's still the same type of response. The same type of thing is going on. And I remember before there was video evidence. Remember when people were saying cops need to wear cameras so that we can see what's happening? Because a lot of people thought that if we could see video evidence, that this stuff would stop. A lot of people are under the impression that, hey, if there's video evidence, they can't deny. Now we can see what's going on if something really happens and we can get some justice. But justice simply does not come. The excuses are the same and it doesn't even matter what happened to the victim or what the victim was doing. There are instances of victims being unarmed and victims having arms. There's instances of kids, little kids, little girls, teenagers, adults. It doesn't matter. As black people, we have seen it all. We've seen that guy get shot because an officer thought that his wallet was a gun. They thought that his cell phone was a gun. We've seen people that have a record get shot. We've seen people that don't have a record and have been shot. It's happened in broad daylight. It's happened after midnight. We've seen people that were angry at the police get shot. We've seen people that were not angry. We've seen people resisting. We've seen people not resisting, obeying and still getting shot. It does not matter what the circumstances are, but the shooting continues to happen. And the shootings that happened this week are terrible. They're absolutely terrible. And we are terrified. The first shooting was Alton Sterling. If you're watching this video, then you've seen that video and you've probably seen the picture where at one point in this scuffle on the ground, the officers have control of both hands. One officer has his knee on one of the arms and the other officer is holding the other arm. This is basically a two person crucifix. They're in dominant positions. Let's de-escalate the situation. You've got them on the ground. Let's get the first handcuff on the first arm and then coordinate with the other officer, tie the other arm, and you both get up out of there. Nobody's hurt, nobody's killed, he's arrested, you take him into custody, and you go along with the justice system. But instead, in less than 30 seconds, this situation, when they're in dominant position on the ground, on top, with two officers versus one person, it quickly turns to the worst, it quickly turns to a gun being fired, 
multiple shots. Obviously, if you're Alton right now, you're in a very uncomfortable position. And I think naturally everybody, if you're in that crucifix position, you're going to try to move a little bit just to relieve some of that pain. Because that is a painful position to be on a concrete floor. And then remember my situation. In the car, my hands are trembling. This guy is probably shaking like crazy. He's probably having a heart attack right now on the ground. He's gonna be moving. He's moving a little bit. He's, he's he, you know, th this, is, this is scary. But these officers, they can't tolerate this situation. It's too much for them. They fear for their lives. They know that he has a gun. The gun is in his pocket. One of the videos, you can see the cop after he's shot and laying there. They go in his pocket. They take something out. The store owner claims that it looked like that was the weapon. It was in the pocket. So now the officer panics. He has his gun out. And that's it. There's no turning back now that the gun is out. Now, I'm not doubting that the officer feared for his life. I believe him. I believe he really did fear for his life. But it happened too soon. He escalated to that fear way too quickly. And there's other instances that are very similar to this, where cops allow the situation to develop a little bit more. And they don't just automatically go to that last level of, I have to shoot him to save myself. Now, there's actually a video that you could find on YouTube. I've seen it everywhere on Twitter, on Instagram. Everybody's been sharing this since this video of Alton Sterling came out. And it's the same situation. There's a guy in a fast food restaurant and there's two cops. They have him on the ground. And this guy gets up off the ground and starts attacking the police. He's reaching for the taser. He's throwing punches, combos. And he's got one handcuff on one of his arms. So he's throwing punches and the handcuffs are like an added weapon. He's viciously attacking the cops and the cops just use tasers. They never pull out a gun and say, you know what? We got to shoot this guy. They pull out a taser and they allow this guy to continue to throw punches over and over and over. And then they go outside the store and they chase him outside the store. And they never think about pulling out a gun to shoot this guy. And he's being so aggressive. And this isn't the only video. If you just search up resisting arrest videos, you're going to see so many situations like this where a guy is on the ground and there's cops. They're trying to handcuff him and he gets up off the ground and starts running. There's all kinds of situations. People spitting on cops, hitting cops, talking trash, running, and you don't see the guns coming out. They're not aiming guns. They're not shooting guns. They're letting it develop. They're giving the guy chances. They're letting the situation go on for minutes, but yet Alton Sterling got less than 30 seconds before they said, forget it. We're just going to shoot and end it. The tolerance level is not the same. It's almost like it's not even there. Like they're not willing to even put up with it. They're just going to, if it happens, if they're in a situation, they just escalated immediately. There's no tolerance. It's so apparent that there is a fear factor there that officers they're so uncomfortable around black people in these tense situations. They, they just can't handle it and they escalate quicker. Now, this next shooting is even worse for Landro Castile. This guy was in the car with his family. His daughter was in the back seat. His girlfriend is sitting right next to him and a police officer opens fire. In this video, we don't actually see the shooting. We just see the aftermath after the shots were fired. And this is just sad. This is just this is a heartbreaker. And in this video, you can hear the cop. He's screaming. He's saying, I told him not to move his hand like you can hear in his voice that he is freaking out. He is going crazy and he's pointing. He's still pointing the gun at him as if he's going to wake up from the dead and shoot you. And, and, and I've seen dumb comments on Facebook and Twitter. People saying, wow, your boyfriend is hurt and you're sitting there recording it. Really? Did you not see that officer? Did you not hear the officer tell her to keep her hands where they are? If she were to go and give assistance to try to help, she would get shot too because the officer would think that she's going to reach for the gun and then try to shoot him to get revenge. 
this officer is not stable he's going crazy and i'm surprised that she didn't freak out she was incredibly calm right there in the moment she was like a statue this officer was terrified they're devastated and he's still worried that she could be a threat it was just disgusting it's so pathetic seeing this one this one is terrible and apparently he even told the officer that he had a gun because they got pulled over and it's time to show the license and registration so obviously you have to go in your pocket and he told the officer hey i have a weapon and the weapon was probably in his pocket so now what do you do black people are terrified because if we can't even reach to get our wallets and registrations because we're in fear that we could get shot in the process of doing that what do we do this is a huge problem you really have to be terrified to believe that a man that is in the car with his family is gonna reach for a weapon and shoot you a police officer through the window when you're looking right at him being a police officer is probably the toughest job in the country and every time something like this happens i'm sure there's a lot of police officers that just call it quits they go and resign they just say you know what it's too much i i can't be in this profession too much stress too much to worry about because being a police officer is like watching out for six young kids in public you've only got two hands but you've got to watch six kids you've got to make sure that nobody's running across the street getting hit by a car you've got to make sure that nobody's drowning in a pool you've got six kids and you're the only one there and your senses have to be on high alert you have to always be watching your back you're getting calls into dangerous neighborhoods you're putting your life on the line every single day every single time you respond to a call and you have to make decisions at the snap of a finger in milliseconds you don't have much time to think because if you hesitate you could lose your life police officers are under so much pressure public opinion is terrible they're never in the news when they do something good only when a mistake happens only when something like this happens that's when they're on the news and police officers can't be convicted even if they make a mistake the stats are unbelievable on police officers actually being indicted convicted for shootings and killings it just doesn't happen it's less than one percent all of this can make you feel hopeless and then of course we have these dallas disasters a sniper in dallas taking out his rage on innocent cops killing cops shooting i don't even know what the numbers are shooting 12 of them five of them were killed and this just makes the situation even worse because now police officers their job just got even tougher earlier i said that being a police officer is like watching six young children out in public but now with the dallas shootings it's like watching 10 children out in public but we need to hold them accountable when they make a mistake and we need a unified tolerance level in dealing with these situations de-escalating these situations and we must admit that there is a problem we can't fix anything if we don't admit that there's a problem it could be consciously it could even be subconsciously but there is a problem and nothing will change until we have this discussion even when LeBron James was on the heat, Wade would still get the loudest cheers in the arena. When they would announce LeBron, the crowd would get hyped. But when they would announce Wade, it would go crazy. And the same thing in the game. If you've ever been to a heat game with LeBron there, 